What's up guys, Python here, back with another video, and finally, the preseason kicks off tomorrow for the New York Rangers. Preseason action does start tonight uh, around the league, well, not necessarily around the league, but it does start for some teams, the Maple Leafs and Canadians will face off, as well as the Minnesota Wild and the St. Louis Blues. So, there is some hockey tonight, which is exciting. I'm probably going to end up watching just because of the fact that we have not had hockey for quite some time, and I just want to watch something. So I'm excited, definitely excited for the New York Rangers to kick things off tomorrow. But we do have to get into the season preview. This is kind of going to be like what I did with the uh, the free agency review back in what it was either July or August. And it's going to be similar to that. But of course, the Rangers decided to get Ryan Reeves like a few days after I made that video. So we're going to go through what the potential lines could be because I kind of did update the lines a bit since there has been some practices and scrimmages. So we're getting a better idea of what the lines could potentially be. And also we've heard Gallant talk about the lines and what could shake up a bit throughout the season and what we could end up seeing. And then, of course, we're going to go over the special teams, which I did before. I'll give my brief thoughts also of where I think the Rangers will end up finishing. So we're going to get into all that, but before we do, be sure to leave a like on this video and subscribe if you are new and enjoy hockey, especially the New York Rangers. You already know that uh, we're going to be recapping every game this year, so you don't want to miss out. You don't want to miss out on that, and yeah, let's jump into this thing. So first, we're going to start off with the additions and subtractions. We already did this before, but we're going to quickly go over them again. And I'm sorry if I did end up missing any. I don't believe I missed any. I might have. I'm not sure. But uh, on the addition side, Barkley Goudreau ended up coming to the New York Rangers for a seventh round pick. They ended up obtaining his rights, so they didn't have to get into a bidding war, potentially overpay, because people already are calling the contract an overpay. But in my opinion, the Rangers did the right thing because if they ended up waiting until free agency, Barkley Goudreau potentially would have got way more because teams tend to pay or tend to overpay, I should say, on free agency. Look at Blake Coleman. He ended up getting, I believe, $5 million with Calgary. Barkley Goudreau could have ended up going into that territory if he did hit the open market. So the Rangers did the right thing, locked him up for, I believe, $4.1 million for the next six seasons. I personally... I'm not a fan of the length of the contract, but I am okay with the dollar amount because this is a guy that is, spoiler alert, going to probably play on the power play a bit, and he's definitely going to be on your penalty kill, and he has so much experience. You have a guy that has been the back-to-back -back Stanley Cup Finals, one back-to-back -back Stanley Cup Finals, I should say, and also did go to the Stanley Cup Finals with the San Jose Sharks. So if there's a guy that knows a thing or two about winning, it is definitely Barkley Goudreau. Next, the Rangers got Ryan Reeves from the Vegas Golden Knights for a third round pick. Obviously, this is another thing where people are like, oh, they overpaid for it. But they ended up getting a fourth round pick from, uh, from Vegas either way. So they have extra draft picks. They could have afforded to lose it, and they ended up locking up Reeves for the exact same deal that he's on for an extra year. So we do have Reeves for two seasons. Who knows if he's going to be here past this season. They may end up flipping him, or maybe he is going to stay, but Ryan Reeves not really going to be. He's here to not, and I'm, I don't want to hear just he's here because just with Tom Wilson and the Islanders broke the New York Rangers. Now, this is a guy that is going to play obviously get in your face hockey we know ryan reeves is like that and he's going to be there when and he's going to help just slow down the other teams wear them down wear and tear them down and it's going to be helpful and you also could do situational things this is what every ranger fan has been talking about where if you're playing a team like Boston, like Washington, like the Islanders, a team that does have that get-in-your-face hockey and does play that physical style of hockey, you throw Ryan Reeves in. If you have a team that is... If you're playing a team that is more about scoring goals, you add your scoring depth and throw in Julian Goche into the lineup. There's a lot of flexibility there. I'm personally a fan of the Ryan Reeves acquisition. And then the Rangers ended up getting Jared Sonorti 
who was with the Boston Bruins for part of last season, and I believe he was with a different team for the other part of last season. I really can't remember who, but Jared Sonority, another big physical guy. He's not going to be here for a big role or anything. He's just here for depth, which we'll get into later. Patrick Nemeth ended up signing. I think he signed for three years, 2.5 million. That is a, or it was two years, something like that. That is a really great contract, in my opinion. This is a guy that is easily going to slot in well on the bottom pair of your blue line. And he does have the ability to throw some hits out there. He is really great defensively. And he's going to be a great mentor for some of the young guys, depending who he plays with, which we'll talk about who I think he's going to play with once we get to the defensive pairs. And then they ended up bringing in Drayden Hunt. Drayden Hunt was with the Coyotes last season. He's just a depth piece. Not much to say there, uh, along with Greg McKegg, who the Rangers ended up bringing back. So not much to say about those two guys. And then Sammy Blay, who, of course, was acquired in the Pavel Buchnevich trade. So not much really to say there. He's going to be in the bottom six, and he's still a young guy. So maybe we could get a little bit out of him. I don't really expect more than uh, 40 points would be really the absolute best case scenario from him but realistically i expect him to drop 20 to 30 points a season for us and then on the subtraction side i'm not gonna get into it too much with pavo buchnevich it's already been said it's already been done and i am really tired quite frankly of talking about it and hearing ranger fans upset about it because i bring this point up all the time and i do want to pose a question to you guys that are still upset about the buchnevich trade which understandably so you could argue that the return should have been better. You could argue that, yeah. You could argue that they shouldn't have let him go. But to me personally, what was the problem then last off season, or last off season, last season? If it was, it, like, what was the problem last season? It was that they had such a lack of depth in the bottom six. And what do they do? They go out and address it. And the bottom pair defensively was awful. What do they do? Go out and address it. They address the problem. Buchnevich had to be moved. And they had to open up some spots for these young players that we asked for. We asked for the young players to get more ice time. And this is one way that it's going to happen. Sure, there is the only other argument I really will take that they should have kept Buchnevich over Kreider. That is definitely an argument there. But... It's already done. It's this is what it is. And personally, I'm OK with it because the Rangers are a better team, in my opinion, than they were last season. Bill DiGiuseppe departs and goes to the Vancouver Canucks in free agency. And then Tony D'Angelo, who was bought out, goes to the Carolina Hurricanes, as well as Brendan Smith and Brett Howden of course, was flipped for that fourth round pick that I was talking about before from Vegas. So he goes there. And then on the addition side, I guess if you want to give a shout out to Tanner Fritz, who the Rangers acquired, and I tweeted about because I, I I don't know when the hell we got him, but Tanner Fritz is a Ranger. So the forward lines. So this is what it has looked like at practice, apparently. And this is just some Ranger fans are losing their minds already because this is what the lines have looked like. And personally, I'm okay with this. I'm going to trust Gallant with whatever line combination he goes with because he knows he's a respected coach in this league. So he knows a thing or two about what to do. And it's not like David Quinn, where the top six is going to be logging all the minutes. The bottom six is going to get just as much ice time or a little bit less than the top six, but they're still going to get enough ice time where it's not going to be nine minutes of the bottom six or eight minutes from the bottom six. No, you're going to see them get over 10 minutes a night 10 to 15 minutes, as well as your top six. So the first line has looked like Kreider's advantage at Lafreniere. I'm personally okay with this as long as Lafreniere is comfortable on the right side, which Gallant said that he has not complained about being on the right side. And I'm sure he will adapt to that role perfectly fine. Uh, to me personally, it's really not going to matter either way what side they're on because Kreider, you really could expect to be playing more towards the, in front of the net. And then you have Lafreniere setting up as a badge out, of course, with Kreider in front of the net. That's really what you're going to end up seeing a lot of. So I'm perfectly fine with this first line. I was advocating for if we kept Buchnevich to see LZB return from what we saw a bit of last season. But to uh, have Kreider and Zabaj, I do have that chemistry. And then Lafreniere, who needs to get top six minutes this year. No excuses. I'm perfectly fine with this. 
Panarin Strom Kako will be your second line. This was a rumored second line. This was uh, something that Ranger fans were advocating for as well. Now, me personally, uh, there was that rumor that we don't know how true it is that Panarin did not like playing with Kako. I personally don't. We don't know what happens behind closed doors. I'm going to say, obviously, now that they're playing together, it's not true or either that. It's either that or Kako has really just looked better in camp, but I, I believe it's just they want to get him top six minutes, and personally, I'm more than okay with Kako playing with Strom and Panarin, and Kako, Jesus Christ, if you've seen the muscle he's put on this offseason, he is going to be scary, and then we know how bread and butter are together, Panarin and Strom. It doesn't matter who's on the wing there. That line is going to get it done no matter what. Panarin is a guy that has the potential to finish top five in scoring in the league, in the entire freaking league. So I am perfectly okay with this line. Third line has looked like Barkley Goudreau, Philip Hedl, and Vitaly Kravtsov. You get a bit of scoring depth and a bit of in-your-face hockey. I would like Hedl to start playing a bit more like he is 6'2". He does have that playmaking ability to set up crafts off and then uh, Barkley Goudreau could both add scoring depth and he could play get in your face hockey. I'd like Heedle to be a little bit more of that this season. And I think that maybe seeing guys like Barkley Goudreau, Sammy Blaine, Ryan Reeves playing that type of hockey, maybe he'll take a step up in the physicality role and play that way. Who knows? But I'd like to see Heedle uh, start to play that way a bit. And then for your fourth line that we have seen or at least heard about being in the scrimmages and it doesn't come to a surprise at all it is sammy blake kevin rooney and ryan reeves that does not surprise me at all that is going to be strictly get in your face hockey rooney i don't really see as that he doesn't strike me as that type of player that much but with blay and reeves playing that way he's probably going to start playing that way but even then this is going to be a complete shutdown line and this is going to be a line that just completely wears and tears down the other team so i'm okay with it and then we have what the rangers are calling the fifth line obviously they can't play a fifth line during games but this is what they're calling it in practices you have drayden hunt morgan Barron, and julian goche who are all guys that are going to be fighting to play this year and these are guys that could potentially play morgan Barron said that he's starting to uh play more physical so morgan Barron might get into the lineup since that's the type of hockey the rangers are going for with the bottom six and he does have a lot of offensive upside Barron might get more ice time than we think he might get more games i should say than we think and maybe at the end of the year he ends up having more games played than kevin rooney who knows julian goche like i mentioned he's really going to be rotating with reeves a lot that's the way i see it and then hunt i don't see getting into the lineup really unless there are significant injuries but even then baron and goche i believe get action first and then they also do have other options forward wise like greg mckeg that i mentioned before he's really another guy i mean when you have these three guys and then Greg McKegg, who is more than serviceable, uh, more than serviceable NHL player, being your fourth extra forward, you have some great depth going on there. And then some other guys that they do have, Johnny Brzezinski, who we saw a bit of last year, Tim Gettinger as well. Maybe we see some action from him. And then we also have down in the AHL, we have Brandon Hoffman, who might get a cup of coffee in the NHL this year. Pajun Niemi as well. He's coming over. And then we also have Justin Richards and Patrick Kudarenko. I, I don't see any of these guys playing unless the injury situation is really bad, which would be that scary. But there, it's nice that they have a lot of depth going into this year. And then, of course, Tanner Fritz, too. So uh, there's that. The defensive pairings, it's... Pretty simple. We know what it's going to be. We predicted it going into this year. Lindgren and Fox, Miller and Truba, and then Patrick Nemeth and Niels Lundqvist. Although Gallant did say in an interview that he's not afraid to play defensemen on their offside. So Niels Lundqvist, if he's struggling in the NHL, Zach Jones might step in and play on the right side defensively, or Nemeth moves to the right and Jones slots in. Robertson could be the same thing, which I forgot the extra r in robertson apparently 
Uh, nice to notice that after, so ignore that, please. Robinson. Um, but, no, you look at the extras, and holy shit, do the Rangers have depth defensively, which is something that we have not had in a very long time. It's no longer Jack Johnson, Brendan Smith, uh, Tony D'Angelo, all these guys playing the bottom pair like we had last year. This year, the depth defensively is ridiculous. Jared Tenorti, Zach Jones, Tarma Reuninen, Matt Robertson, apparently, Bra uh, Braden Schneider, Lieber Hayek, Anthony Potato, who we saw a bit of last year, and Mason Gertzen, who, like, to have that guy last on your depth chart, which you have, what, he's probably your 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th, 13th, 14th defenseman on, on the depth chart. Yeah, you, you're looking pretty good defensively. I don't see really... The guys that probably end up getting any sort of NHL action out of this group, probably Tenorti, Jones, Potato the most, get the action. This isn't in order of how it is, although Gertzen, I'd say, probably is last on the depth chart out of these guys. But um, I see that I see it being Tenorti, Jones, and Potato getting the first call if there is any injuries defensively. But to have this depth is just, it's unreal. Unreal depth. And then goaltending. We got Shesterkin, of course, Georgiev, and Kincaid. We knew that going into this year that that was going to be the goaltending. And then Tyler Wall and Adam Huska will be your fourth goaltender if injuries do get to that degree. Hopefully not. And then this is where things get a bit interesting for me. So special teams. So I went a little bit crazy with the special team predictions. So we have not heard anything about what the special teams could look like. But to me personally, I see it being you have Kreider's a badge at Lafreniere and then you have Panarin and Fox back there on the point. The way I see that going is you have Kreider blocking the net. You got uh, Lafreniere and Zabanajad playing on the half walls and then you have Panarin uh, firing shots away and Adam Fox, of course, quarterbacking. I think that that could be a deadly power play. If you see the passes Lafreniere is making the Zabanajad in the scrimmages, it is unreal how good this guy is. Lafreniere is going to be a completely different beast this year, and I'm excited to see it. And to have a playmaking guy like that, as well as Panarin, who has both a wicked shot and he does have that. Panarin and Lafreniere are the same where they both have. I'm not saying Lafreniere is that caliber. Hopefully he gets there at one point, but uh, he is, they both do share that quality that they both have a great shot, but they are more reliant on their playmaking. Zabajad, we know how he is with that shot. The guy was in the Rocket Richard race not too long ago, not last season, but the year before. And then Kreider in front of the net, we know that he likes to do the dirty work in front of the net. So to have him there like he's been doing his entire Rangers career, definitely going to be good. The second power play unit is a little bit tricky. There isn't really anyone that stands out to me here. You do have Kaka, who I think will play that role that Kreider does on that first power play unit where he will get in front of the net for you. And then you have Barkley Goudreau and Ryan Strom. Not really the best where you have Zabanja and Lafreniere. Uh, it, they'd be doing a similar role as that. So I don't really like that too much. But honestly, there really isn't that many great options for the power play. You could maybe see Phil Peel in there. But I'd throw Barkley Goudreau there because of the fact that he wins a lot of faceoffs. And to have him center that would be nice. I think he should be the third line center and he should move to the wing personally either way, but we'll have to wait and see. And then Truba quarterbacking that and Kravtsov playing on the point as well. Kravtsov does have a lot of offensive ability, so I like that there. And then Truba, he might get, uh, he might end up taking a back seat though on the power play because Niels Lundqvist, in my opinion, has a legit shot of quarterbacking the second power play unit. He might end up playing with Jacob Truba on that power play. Who knows what they do there. And then the penalty kill is a little bit tricky as well. I have Goudreau and Zibanejad. Zibanejad saw a lot of penalty kill time last year. So I expect him to be getting a lot of action on the penalty kill this year again. Barkley Goudreau, he has a lot of penalty killing experience. He was one of the best, especially in Tampa, on those cup runs. We know that he is more than capable of filling in that role. And then we have Lindgren and Truba. The reason why I don't have Lindgren and Fox is because Glant did say that he doesn't want to completely overkill Fox on the minutes and log too many minutes for him. So he's 
Fox will probably end up getting the second penalty kill unit like I have listed. Lingard and Truba, more than capable of being a solid penalty kill pair. And then for penalty kill two, Kevin Rooney. And then I have Sammy Blay and Kako. Kako is here because of the fact that he was one of the best defensive forwards last season, just in hockey in general. So he does have a legit role of, or he does have a legit shot of Gain a crack on the penalty kill, in my opinion. But uh, I think they're going to start the year with Kevin Rooney, who was on our penalty kill last year, who was really great. And then you do have Sammy Blay, who is really going to... I, I think that he did penalty kill work in St. Louis. I'm not too sure. But uh, the way that he plays the game, I see him as a penalty killer. And then you also do have guys like Stroman Kreider, who could see some penalty kill time, uh, depending on, obviously, if one of these guys do take the penalty you need someone else to fill in the role and then Patrick Nemeth and Adam Fox on the blue line there I think that that will work out and then maybe Niels Longquist does get some action since like I said um you know he he's more than capable of doing some of these things like being on the power play being on the penalty kill he's the real deal Niels as I like to call him and I think that he might get to penalty kill time but I this is how I see it to start the season but if I did have to give a prediction of where the Rangers will finish in the Metropolitan Division, I'm not going to um, completely spoil it because I do have my season predictions coming soon. So if I was to make a prediction, I will put it in a range. I have them finishing. I, they are going to be a playoff team. I'll say that. I'll leave it at they're going to be a playoff team, in my opinion. And to me personally, if two... I say this all the time. If two out of the three between Lafreniere, Kako, and Kravtsov, if two of the three of them could break out and be fill in the roles that they are supposed to as top six guys, well, Kravtsov is playing on the third line, but if they could play like top six wingers, at least two of them, this team, there's no reason they can't be a legit threat in the playoffs. You do have, they have every aspect of a playoff slash Stanley Cup team, especially if those guys break out. You have a guy that's capable of winning the Rocket Richard. You have a guy that's capable of winning a Hart Trophy. You have a guy that just won the Norris Trophy. You have depth on the blue line. You have depth in the forward group. Get in your face hockey, scoring depth. You have a goaltender who has the potential to be a top 10 goalie in the league. We'll just have to wait and see if he finally, uh, it's not that Chesterkin's been bad, but we do need to see more proof, especially in a full season, if he is a top 10 goaltender in this league. You have a more than capable backup for him. This team has all the makeups of being a Stanley Cup threat. Will they do it this year? I don't know because of the fact that the team is so young that you're going to need some playoff experience to build up either way first, but there's no reason this team can't make noise in the playoffs if Lafreniere, Kako, and Krasov do step up. If you could even get 50 points out of two of them, they don't have to be point per, games player, uh, point per game players, but if they are, then this team is going to be really fucking scary. But you don't even need that from them. If they could give you 50 points, at least two of them, you are you got something going there. You got something going there, and they're only going to get better with age. So I'm excited for the season. This is the most confident a while I have felt in a Rangers team probably since the last time we made the playoffs, honestly. So I'm feeling really good about this team where last year it was just stupid optimism because looking back, I don't know how I thought they were a good team. This team, you look at it on paper at the very least, they have a legit shot of being a real threat. But thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoy it. Leave a like if you did subscribe if you guys are new and that's been python i'm out peace